Welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to go over how we designed our 120 volt and 240 volt electrical system for the Spartan Manor trailer. So I'm going to cover the major design decisions that we made in making this particular setup and talk about the appliances that we're planning on installing in this trailer. And for those of you who maybe aren't as familiar with power and volts and amps, I'm going to go over a bit of that stuff too. Hey, I'm Dan, and my mom and I bought some land out in the countryside to build a house. And to help with that, we thought we should have a trailer. So why not renovate a 1949 Spartan Manor? So if you want to see how these go, plus some other random DIY stuff, subscribe and follow along. The first big decision in designing the electrical system for our trailer was to go all electric. And that means no gas for cooking, heating, or water heating. And the reason we did this is because we're going to have this trailer stationary on our land anyway, and so we can have a hefty shore power connection. I think if you're still planning to travel with your trailer, you might want to keep some gas appliances because most of the campground hookups for shore power, which is where you can plug in your trailer, are 30 or 50 amps, which can get used up pretty quickly. The next big decision was what kind of water heater to install in the trailer. As I'm sure you're aware, this is kind of a standard home water heater. This one's only 30 gallons and draws about 20 amps, which is pretty reasonable. But you can see it's pretty big. And for our little 25 foot trailer, that's not a very practical size. I did find a really cool marine water heater online and that's used in boats. And that was about 17 gallons and could have fit right here where the gas bottles used to be on the trailer tongue. And what I really liked about that unit is that it has a heat exchanger inside of it, which allows the excess heat from the engine to heat up the water in the water heater instead of using so much electricity. So of course this trailer doesn't have an engine. So instead I was thinking I could have hooked up a solar hot water heater system to help heat up the water in there and also save on our electricity use. But the one thing I didn't like about that is that it costs about $1,700. And also I was worried that 17 gallons might run out pretty quickly. The final option was a tankless water heater. And these are great because they're very compact, but they draw a lot of power. The one we end up getting is 14 kilowatts and requires a 60 amp circuit at 240 volts. We bought this instant hot water heater because when I read about it online, it said it was capable of producing enough water for a shower, whereas the next power level down was only rated for sinks. And while it's true, that really depends on the incoming water temperature. So depending on where you live, this unit might not be able to heat the water enough for a shower. And so I'll probably be augmenting its heating capability with a solar hot water heater. The next step was to figure out what other appliances we want to have in the trailer and how much current they'll draw. So we had already installed this heater slash AC unit and that draws 15 amps. We'll also have a fridge right here and those typically pull about two amps. This area is our main kitchen counter and we'll have some kind of microwave or microwave convection oven combo that will pull 15 to 20 amps. We also have a countertop induction stove that can draw about 15 amps. We also decided to put all the lights and some of the general purpose outlets around the trailer on one circuit of 15 amps. And then we have a DC converter for our roof fence and one for the radio. Each one of these would only pull three amps at most. So if you add all those up, plus that 60 amp hot water heater, that ends up being about 140 amps of current draw. And if you think about it, we could actually be using a lot of that at the same time. We could be heating the trailer while somebody's taking a shower and somebody else could be using the oven and the induction stove at the same time while playing the radio, right? So there could be a lot of power draw at once. And that's why we decided to go for a 120 amp breaker panel with eight spaces in it. Finally, we had to decide how we we're gonna group all those different appliances into the different circuits. And a big guiding principle in that is that the commonly available cable sizes are 15 and 20 amps in capacity. And so we tended to go for 15 or 20 amp breakers or less. Higher draw appliances usually get their own breaker. So the hot water heater has its own, the heater for the entire trailer has its own, as does the microwave slash oven we'll have. And because we tend to use a lot of high power appliances in kitchens like kettles and toasters, we thought we should have a 20 amp supply on this side of our kitchen and a 15 amp supply on this side. We also decided to put all the lights and some of the general purpose outlets around the trailer on one circuit of 15 amps. Finally, we had a separate circuit for the two DC converters that power the vents on the roof and the radio. So in total, that was seven different circuits but one of those circuits was 240 volts, so that takes two spaces, 
for a total of eight spaces in a breaker panel. And eight spaces means that there can be eight separate 120 volt circuits in that panel, or two of those spaces can be used up by an appliance like the hot water heater, which runs at 240 volts. As I mentioned before, if you're planning on traveling with your trailer, you may want to keep the current draw between 30 and 50 amps, because that's the shore power connection typically available in campgrounds. If thinking about the current draw and power consumption of appliances is all new to you, I'll back up for a second. You can easily find that information on the product website, especially like on Amazon, it'll be in the product info section. Or if you already have it, you can find it in the user manual. Of course, at home, you can look for labels on your own appliances, like this microwave here, where you can see it's 120 volts and 1800 watts. If you're not familiar with electricity, watts, volts, and amps might all sound kind of confusing, but don't worry because they're all related by a very simple formula. So the power in watts is equal to the voltage times the current in amps. So this microwave is 1800 watts, and we can figure out how much current that pulls by dividing 1800 watts by 120 volts. And 120 volts is the standard voltage of most outlets in your home. And by carrying out that calculation, we can see that this microwave draws 15 amps of current. As another example, this nine watt LED bulb draws a mere 0.08 amps. One last thing about electricity, when you're looking at the specs and power needs of appliances, you'll probably see the number 60 followed by an HZ, which stands for Hertz. And that just means how quickly the alternating current is fluctuating. Here in the US, 60 Hertz is standard. So everything you buy will be compatible with that. So really, you would only have to worry about this if you're trying to bring in some appliances or something from Europe, which runs at 50 Hertz. And even then, it might be okay. It just depends on what it is. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. And in the next video, I'll show you how we actually installed all of this. Thanks for watching.